Hello and welcome to a very spooky special, guys. Happy Halloween. I don't um, I don't really have anything planned and I'm super fucking lazy. So instead of doing anything creative, um, we're just going to read some spooky books. I, <laughs> I have a few. I have a few here from Oblivion uh, that we can read. Um, they're not the best. Um, Skyrim, I think, had better books. We actually might end up going up north to read uh, one of the Skyrim books I really want to check out. But we'll worry about that later, guys. Let's get through a few of these books. Um, they're quite short. They're just little short stories. And then uh, we can move on to some more exciting stuff in a moment. Well, guys, let's just jump into this. Um, this one here is called The Exodus. It's a tale of a parent's desperate bid to save their only child. And it's one of the, the spookier stories in oblivion so strap in i hope you got your marshmallows on the fire don't put them on the open flame you know get them all melty uh and i uh, hope you're relaxed hope you got a nice blanket uh let's <laughs> let's get into this one the exodus by Wokin jath that's his real name <laughs> vrala was a little girl beautiful and sweet natured beautiful and smart beautiful and energetic they're not the best writing. Don't worry about it, guys. Everything that her parents had dreamed she would be, as perfect as she was, they could not help but have dreams for her. Her father was a bit of a social climber named Munthen. Thought she would marry well, perhaps become princess of the empire. Her mother, an insecure woman named Sonetta, or Chinetta, Chinetta, thought she would reach greatness on her own as a knight or a sorceress. As much as they wanted the very best for their daughter, they argued about what her fate would be. But both were wrong. Instead of growing up, she grew very ill. The temples told them to give up hope, and the major guild told them that what afflicted uh, that yeah what afflicted Vrala was so rare, so deadly that there was no cure. She was doomed to die, and soon. When the great institutions of the empire failed them, Monthan and Chinetta, uh, much like Stannis Baratheon, told them all to go to hell. They sought out the witches, the sorcerer hermits, and the other hidden secret powers that lurk in the shadows of civilization. I can think of only one place you can go, said an old herbalist they found in the remote peaks of the Rongarian Mountains, R Rothgarian Mountains, the Mages Guild at Olenveld. But we've already been to the Mages Guild, uh, protested Monthan. They couldn't help us. Go to Armveld. I tell you, no one that what? And tell no one that you're going there. It was not easy to find Olenveld, as it did not appear on any modern map. In a bookseller's in Skyrim, however, they found a historic book, a cartography from the Second Era. In the yellowed pages, there was Olenveld, a city on an island in the northern coast. A day's sail in summertide from Winterhold. Bundling their pale daughter against the chill of the ocean wind, the couple set sail, using the old map as their only guide. For nearly two days they were at sea, circling the same position, wondering if they were the victim of a cruel trick. And then they saw it. In the midst of the crashing waves were twin crumbled statues framing the harbour. Long forgotten gods or heroes, perhaps. The ships within were half sunk, rotten shells along the docks. Monthan brought his ship in and the three walked into the deserted island city. Taverns with broken windows, a plaza with a dried up well, shattered palaces and fire blackened tenements, barren shops and abandoned stables, all desolate, all still. But for the high kneeling ocean wind that whistled through the empty places and gravestones, every road and alley was lined and cross and cross again with memorials to the dead. Candlelight glistened through the windows of a great dark building, but it brought them little relief to know that someone was alive in the island of death. They knocked in the door and steeled themselves against whatever horror they may face within. The door was opened by a rather plump middle-aged Nord woman with frizzy blonde hair. Standing behind her, a meek-looking bald Nord about her age, a shy teenage Breton couple, still very pimply and awkward, and a very old, apple-cheeked Breton man who grinned with delight at the visitors. Oh my goodness, said the old Nord woman all a fluster. I thought my ears must be fooling me. For some reason the Nords are Irish. D don't worry about it. When I heard the door knocking, come in, come in, it's all cold. 
uh, the three uh, were ushered in the door, and they were relieved to find the guild did not look abandoned in the least. It was very well, ver uh, it was well swept, well lit, and cheerfully decorated. The group fell into introductions. The inhabitants of the guild house of Hollenfeld were two families, the Nords Jalma and Net, and the Bretons Lywell, Rosalind, and Old Winston. Good old Winston. They were all friendly and accommodating, immediately bringing some mulled wine and bread while Munthen and Janetta, Janetta explained to them uh, what they were doing there and what the healers and herbalists had said about Vrala. So you see, said Janetta tearfully, we didn't think we'd find the mages in Olenveld, but now that we have, please, you're our last hope. The five strangers also had tears in their eyes. Nept, Net wept particularly noisily, Oh, you've been through so much, too much, the old Nord woman bawled. Of course, what a help. Little, little girl will be right as rain. It is fair to tell you, said Jelma more stoically, though he clearly was touched by the tale. This is a guild house. We are not but mages. We took this building because it abandoned and it serves our purposes since the exodus. We are necromancers. Necromancers, Chitta quivered. How could these nice people do anything so horrible? Yes, dear, Ned smiled, patting her hand. I know we have a bad reputation, I'm afraid. And now that well-meaning but full of Archmagister Hannibal Traven. May the Worm King eat his soul, cried the old man. <laughs> Quite suddenly and very viciously. Now, now, Winston, said the teenage girl, Rosalind, blushing and smiling at Shanetta apologetically. I'm sorry about him. He is usually very sweet-natured. Well, of course he's right. Madame Marco will have the last say in the matter. Yalma, Yalma said, but right now it's very, well, awkward. When Traven officially banned the art, we had to go into hiding. The only other option was we abandoned it altogether, and that's just foolish. Though, there are many who have done that. Not many people know about Olenveld anymore since Tybal Semptum used it as his own personal graveyard, said Lil. Took us a week to find it again, but it's perfect for us. Lots of, uh, dead bodies, you know. Lil, Rosalind had punished him. You're going to scare them. All right, Lanwell grinned sheepishly. I don't care what you do here, said Munthen sternly. I just want to know what you can do for my daughter. Well, said Jelma with a shrug. Is it Yelma? I guess we can make it so she doesn't die and is never sick again. Janetta gasped, please! We'll give you anything, everything we have. Nonsense, said Ned, picking up Vrala in her big beefy arms. Oh, what a beautiful girl. Would you like to feel better, little sweetheart? Vrala nodded, wearily. You stay here, Yelma said. Rosalind, I'm sure we have something better than bread to offer these nice folks. Ned started to carry Vrola away, but Janetta ran after her. Wait, I'm coming too! Oh, I'm sure you would, but it'd ruin the spell, dear, Ned said. Don't worry about a thing. We've done this dozens of times. Munthen put his arms around his wife, and she relented. Rosalind hurried off to the kitchen and brought some roast fowl and some mild wine for them. They sat in silence and ate and drank. Winston shuddered suddenly. The little girl has died. Oh! Janetta gasped. What an oblivion do you mean? Munthen cried. Winston, was that really necessary? Lumel scowled the old man. Before turning to Munthen and Janetta, she had to die. Necromancy is about curing, is not about curing a disease. It's about resurrection, total regeneration, transforming the whole body, not just the parts that aren't working now. Munthen stood up angrily. If these maniacs have killed her. They didn't, Rosalind snapped her shy eyes now showing fire. Your daughter was on her last breath when she came in here. Anyone could have seen that. I know this is hard, horrible even, but I know I won't have you call that sweet couple who are trying to save you maniacs. Sh Shanetha burst into tears. But she's going to live now, isn't she? Oh yes, Little said, smiling broadly. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Janetta burst into tears. I don't know what we could have done. I know how you feel, said Rosalind, patting Winston's hand fondly. When I thought we were going to lose him, I was willing to do anything, just like you. Janetta smiled. How old is your father? My son, Rosalind corrected her. He's six. 
From the other room came the sound of tiny footsteps. Frala, go give your parents a big hug, said Jalmil. Munthen and Chinetta turned and the screaming began! Whoa! Whoa! God, guys, what a fantastic... What a fantastic little story, although we knew where that one was going. We don't really have time to read anything else. Um, I've got this one here, The Purloined Shadows. Uh, that's about uh, a chill tale uh, recounting the theft of Nocturnal's crown. No, we, we don't really need to read that. Um, and then we've got A Game at Dinner by an anonymous spy. No, we don't need to read that. Um, let's travel up north, guys. We've got a book here called A Tragedy in Black. Wowee. Um, this is a very, uh, very famous short story uh, that can only be found in Skyrim uh, through booksellers and uh, cr uh, drugger-filled crypts. Okay, guys, let's cast a little cat space mission here. And we're going to go traveling further north than we've ever traveled before. See if we can <laughs> hit a rock here. There we go. All right, guys. Um, this flight might take a little bit of time, but I hope you're excited. We're going to go travel north and uh, forage in the wilderness. See if we can find some books. God, guys, where are we? This is the furthest north I've ever been. What the f- what was that? Jesus. Okay. I don't know where the fuck we are, but uh... Hopefully, um, I know uh, up north there's just books everywhere. Um, people leave them out and about, so hopefully we can just, um... Find a spooky book nearby. Up here. Jesus! What the fuck? Did you guys see that? We'll take that, we'll do some kitty cooking when we get home, you know? Add it to our marshmallows. What the- what is that? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, guys. Okay, we need to find a book. It might take a while. Oh, what's that? Oh, a book! A Tragedy in Black. A folk tale from the time of the Oblivion Crisis. Excellent. Well, we'll take that. That's perfect. And let's, um... Let's get the fuck out of here, guys. I don't know if I like this place. Let's get back to Cyrodiil. As quickly as possible here. Um, so let's read this one, guys. I'm glad we were able to find it. A Tragedy in Black. A folk tale from the time of the Oblivion Crisis. Here we go, guys. The Jamora looked on the young boy with disdain. He looked to be no more than 17 or 18. On the cusp of manhood. You... You have summoned me? Mother says I'm good with spells. Someday I'm gonna be a wizard, maybe even Archmage. And what would your mother know of magic, boy? She's a wizard. She's an enchanter at the Arcane University. Ah, another dabbler in the mystic arts. I'm certain she is barely mediocre. You shut up. I read the scroll. I get to tell you what to do. The Dramora was silent. Compulsion bound his voice. I want to know how to make a magic dress. I need it for a birthday. The Dramora's answer was more silent. You have to tell me. It's in the rules. Freed from the previous compulsion, the Dramora answered, First, you need a soldier. I happen to have one, and I would gladly give it to you for such a noble cause. Really? Why do I need it? With a hidden smile, the Dramora handed over a dull, dark-looking gem. It is not enough to cast upon an inert object. Magic requires thought, intent, will, and emotion. The powers of enchantment. The bigger the soul, the more powerful the enchantment. Uh, so how big is the one in this soul gem? Oh, that one is empty. You'll have to find something to fill it with. But it can hold the largest of souls easily. Do you know how to do that? No, the young man said suddenly. Let me show you. You cast a spell like this. The tendrils of a soul trap spell spilled from his fingers and surrounded the boy. The young man's eyes went wide. I didn't feel anything. How about now? The Dramora asked, plunging his talons into the youth's ribcage. His heart beat only once before it was pulled from his chest. Quickly, the Dramora snatched the black soul gem. Just as the youth died, his soul tried to flee but was trapped by the spell and drawn into the gem. Only black soul gems can hold the souls of men and elves. 
Your mother obviously never told you to never accept a freely given gift from a summoned Dramora. He said to the corpse, you see it breaks the conjuration, freeing the summon from the summoner. Now let's go find your mother. After all, I have another black soul gem. <laughs> oh, spooky. Whoa.